This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. Uh, they have free shipping over $50, gift cards available, and you can save even more with a paid subscription service. Um, great flavors, uh, great uh, seasonal flavors that they have. So everything's changing throughout the throughout the year. So be sure to look at what great flavors they have over at Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, they have all of their beans are high quality, direct directly from uh, a lot of countries such as Colombia, Brazil, Ethiopia, Peru, and other great countries too. So hit them up at ironbeancoffee.com for more information. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. You're missing out, Austin. It's maybe the best. I have not tried that either, Jared. Yes, you have. You I might have. not know it, but yeah, you have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and for the YouTube folks, they're they're talking about seasonings and and all that in the in the chat. Ooh, that's a that's a great one. I I did not look to see what his actual record is, but Howard only one in five against Holtman. How about that? Just like another coach who's one for against Ohio state. Coincidence. He's on his way. He's on his way. All right, Jared, we got quite a few questions here, so let's let's jump right into it. God, you remember you remember when I, I dry rubbed those wings? Mm -hmm. I think it was not the last time you came up, but the time before, and we did the dry rubbed wings on the grill. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Remember remember when I made that uh that, that Greek flavored uh pork loin on the grill? I think so. That guy. Okay. Yeah. All right. You're making me hungry. Let's start. By the way, I managed to get my air fryer in the car cooking secured. You don't, you don't put air, you don't put oil in an air fryer gangland. I mean, you kind of do because all the stuff gathers at the bottom. <laughs> My my air fryer does not cook as well right after right after I clean it. <laughs> the air fryer always cooks a little more efficiently when I haven't cleaned it in a minute. All right, let's start the show. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right. You're making me hungry over here with all the food talk in the chat here. <laughs> but how are you, you doing, Jared? You started it. We were, I mean, the, the Super Bowl, uh, this episode is not going to be released until Tuesday. But as we record this, the Super Bowl is still in our future. So we started talking about like Super Bowl stuff. Austin, I'm, I'm going to give you the easiest wing recipe that you can do in, in your air fryer. The absolute easiest. Just, just get yourself a baggie. Put a tad of olive oil in that baggie and then put a bunch of that Cavenders in that baggie, mix it all up. Just let it, let it sit there in the fridge for, let it sit there in the fridge for like a overnight, overnight, overnight's fine. And, uh, you're going to want those before you air fry it though. Like when you're getting ready, take it back out of the baggie. And this is why we use a baggie because you're keeping all that like raw chicken in an enclosed thing, right? This is why we use a baggie. Um, now, now we take it back out and we're just going to let it sit because we want to get the, we want those wings to get the room temperature because that way they're going to get they're The insides are going to cook thoroughly and uh, there easy. All of it, all it is is olive oil, 
and the the Cavender's Greek seasoning. That's and that's it, and it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm the king of giving advice people didn't ask for. <laughs> that's all right. That's my whole thing. <laughs> well, well, speaking of speaking of um, things ask for, it is the Ask Sloopcast uh, episode here, Jared. So let's let's answer some questions. I should probably from our actually fl- change the thing. Hold on. From our uh, fellow uh, Sloopcast patrons, and if you want to ask a question, be sure to um, join our Discord, become a Patreon, and you too can join these. Uh, these hooligans in the chat here and ask a question that could be answered in our next episode. Absolutely. Uh, Austin, Austin, by our first question uh, is Austin saying, where can I get Cavenders? What a great question, Austin. Uh, We are not sponsored by Cavenders, by the way. Um, Although I don't even know who, who like the actual manufacturer is. It's probably McCormick or something, but um. I, I don't know about Florida, but I know you're coming up to Ohio here soon. Um, I, you can find it in like any Kroger or whatever in Ohio. Um, I have no idea. Yeah, Kroger, Meyer, Walmart, probably even any any big grocer is going to carry Cavenders, at least in the Columbus area. That's the case. And I know you're not coming to Columbus, but I know the side of Ohio you're moving to. And uh, that 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 side is even more Greek than Columbus is. So you'll, you'll be fine. You're moving to a very Mediterranean area of Ohio. You'll be fine. Yes. It's, that's, it's all Mediterranean. That, it's all Mediterranean, that, Austin. That's, that's Jared in a nutshell. Uh, yeah. Just Mediterranean. <laughs> that's just, that's, I, I, when people, I just, uh, Mediterranean. It's just easier that way. Just to say, ah, I'm Mediterranean. Yeah. All right. Nomad with a few questions here, Jared. He asks, is it is it uh, April 16th yet? No. No, we still got two more months. Uh, that is <laughs> two... the spring game for anyone keeping score at home. Uh, that is a spring game. That was announced recently. Um, although it's one of those things where it's like the worst kept secret because you could go look on like event calendars. People are always like, when's the spring game? I'm like, April 16th. They go, I can't find that. You just got to gotta dig a little bit harder. It's always showing up on like, a, like I said, on like the event calendars, if you just know where to look on the Ohio State stuff. All right. He also asked, with the talk of the Big Ten going away from divisions, is this the, the uh, pre- pure precursor, that's the word, to further expansion? I think those are two separate thoughts. Um, but I'm happy that the Big Ten's talking about going away from divisions, um, moving into like a pod system, I assume. Um, divisions are dumb. Like, I feel like we always do divisions because we've always done divisions, right? Like, the Big Ten set up divisions because all the other conferences with the, you know, at, the, at that time, you had to have 12 teams in order to have a conference championship game. That was the law. That was the NCAA rule at the time. I don't think it is anymore. I think the Big 12 got an exception, but who cares? Um, but the... So, like, uh, once Nebraska came in and the Big 10 had 12 teams, they're like, okay, divisions. Why? And, like, I understand why you do divisions. Maybe, like, for... Like, the, the, the smaller nonprofit sports... The non-revenue sports, I get it, because like travel expenses and all of that, right? But but it's not necessary for football. That's why. That's it. Why? Uh, it's just I feel like it's a thing you do because it's a thing people have done. I'm all for tradition, but tradition shouldn't be a substitute for thought. Yeah. Uh, Iowa State and Kansas, or UNC and Virginia, as if you had to choose between the two, Iowa State and Kansas, or UNC and Virginia. I, I, t- I, t- for I know expansion? my my yeah for the expansion yeah it for me easy it's it's UNC and Virginia 
Yeah, that's that's not even a question. I it, 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 if we're it's, if we're talking about what the Big Ten wants, it, it, those you, are two of the two. best public universities in the country. Not not just that, but also you're getting into two. I mean, yes, you're getting into Kansas and Iowa, two other states too. No, well, one other state, Kansas, Virginia, and UNC are two great media states too. You you got you you got North Carolina and then Virginia, and you're right there next to to the DC area too. Absolutely, Virginia and UNC. If if you're thinking Big Ten corporate minded. That's that's a big media outlet there. Yeah, but also like and then on on top of that, like their their AAU teams or schools, which is enormously important for the Big Ten. Yep. They're both huge research institutions, which you know, we we Kyle and I have gone on this rant a thousand times. Sports does not make money. We talk about all these big contracts and for ESPN and Fox and blah, 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 blah. Sports doesn't make money. Research grants and patents make monies. That's that's just facts. It's just, So like when the Big Ten's like, well, we're education first. And people go, yeah, sure you are. No, actually they are. Now, is that because they're better than everyone else? No, it's because that's where the actual money is. It's all money. And education and research is where the actual money is. Yeah. Uh, Austin, by the way, in the live chat asked, would breaking away from divisions be better or worse for Ohio State? Kyle, what's your thoughts? Honestly, I don't, I don't think it neither is better or worse. Honestly, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't think it's going to, I don't think it would help or make them um, or, yeah. I don't think I don't think it would do either way. So like my first thoughts, if they do a pod system, which makes sense to me, um, you're probably being placed into. Well, hold on, 14 teams. Which does not 14 does not divide super easily. Nope. Nope. You'd have to you'd have to have each team have like. Let's you almost have to have four, one. Let's say, let's say three or four teams. Say three or four. Let, let's just say three teams. You you play three teams every year, right? And just uh, one of the pods would have to only have four, mm -hmm. which is difficult to navigate. Or excuse me, no. Well, and, and that that could be that could be yeah. the that could be the East the the East teams. That could be the Rutgers, Maryland, UNC, and Virginia. I mean, yeah. three of the three of the three of those teams that were. Yeah. Agreed, one Austin. conference already before. <laughs> Austin says, "Well, that's why you expand to six teams. Yeah, because now it's now now you have four pods with four teams each. Yeah, yep. That's that's the easy math. If 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 that's a thing that happens, um, with the 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 pod system would actually have to be like two four teams and two three team pods in order to make that work. So the pod system for anyone who doesn't know, it's essentially micro divisions." And the only thing that really means is that you essentially have these four teams and those four teams will play each other. They'll round Robin every year. So like those are yep. your protected rival games. So you'd probably end up having Ohio state, Michigan and Michigan state all in one pod. And then someone else. Let's, let's, let's put in, let's put in, um, Indiana. Let's put in Indiana there. Cause you know, cause, cause Penn state's not our rival. Uh, well, <laughs> Penn state almost has to be in the pod with just geographically speaking. If they yeah, care I about, mean, it, no one cares well, about Illabuck. That's, that's, I'm sorry. That's no a, one cares. That's a question. That's a question in here. Well, I would, we'll address that Austin. No, no one cares. <laughs> Um, the, it's a big wooden turtle. No one cares. Uh, the yeah. So it's I don't know, that 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 decision might be driven by. I don't know what do do they care when they go to put together the the pod system? Do they care about geography? Because if they do, 
And if we don't have have in it, like another ACC team has not been stolen at the time you put together the pod system, then it all you almost have to put Penn State with Rutgers and Maryland at that point. Now, if they do maybe pick up a UNC and a Virginia, then, well then your pod is then like your East Coast pod, which is. Rutgers and Maryland and Virginia and UNC Penn state would then be with Ohio state, Michigan and Michigan state. So yeah, all, all of that makes sense. But if you, if you're, yeah, it's, it's tough. Uh, I would say ultimately it's worse for Ohio state, by the way, I know that was the original question. Um, only because they get to play Maryland and Rutgers guaranteed every year right now. And those teams are who they are. That's that's it. It's you. You have you have two easy W's on the schedule right now. Mm-hmm. That's that's reality. That's the reality of it. Uh, that that's it. That I wish yeah. it was more complicated than that. I wish I had more to say about it than that. But fact of the matter is, if the East goes away, uh, that's two. That's two like gimme wins gone pretty easy off the schedule yeah all right jared um good luck on that one buckeye zach uh, austin formation asks here which buckeye is going to be drafted the highest in um in this year's nfl draft who gets drafted first after the two wide receivers that second question's tougher i think ultimately wilson probably gets picked before Alave only because he's going to do better in the combine. Like Wilson, Garrett Wilson's a combine guy and Chris Alave is going to be the guy who falls probably because of the combine, but then everyone, he ends up getting picked later than he should. And then he ends up like kicking ass in the NFL. And then everyone goes, well, why was he picked so late? Why does everyone care so much about the combine? And then we just repeat this cycle a thousand times until the NFL disintegrates into nothing. It's just a mistake. Everyone keeps making over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Honestly, um, I see Buckeye Zach's like, yay, Wilson to the Browns. I, I think, yeah, I think, I don't think that Wilson or Alave will be, I don't think they'll be drafted top 10. No. But if the Browns really wanted a red receiver, I, I think they could get either one of them. The Browns picking top 10? No, they are outside. Why? So I... Oh, because you're saying if they fall. Okay, never mind. I'm with you. I understand what you're saying now. I understand what you're saying now. Uh, Kyle, who's the first Buckeye picked? Not um, a, a wide well, receiver. Oh, uh, not a wide receiver. Oh boy, wasn't that the second part of the question? Uh, yeah. Who gets drafted first after the two wide receivers? Uh, gangland, <laughs> false. <laughs> Um, false for multiple reasons. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say, man, I'm gonna say maybe Haskell Garrett. I say Garrett. I think that's certainly possible. I think he will have. I, I think the question will come like, what kind of combine does he have? I think we'll probably pay play a big a big role into that. Um, mm-hmm. Thayer Munford, I think, is probably I, another I, guy I, to keep an eye on in that in that yeah. realm. Uh, I haven't been I think, following I NFL mock. I don't. I don't bother looking at NFL mocks until after the combine because they basically get ripped up and thrown away after yeah, until think, the combine. So I don't invest time into looking into it. Um, yeah. Oh think, yeah, I think NPF. Your next picks, yeah, I think Austin your next says is NPF. probably. I think it's Garrett, uh, Harrison, and NPF. I think are your next ones. Yeah, NPF is like the raw talent. Again, like how Garrett Wilson's probably going to go ahead of Alave because he's more the raw talent guy of the two. NPF is more of the raw talent guy over Thayer Munford. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, 
All right, let's answer one more question here. Uh, Austin asks, predict the captains for the 2022 Buckeyes, six total. Oh, man. Um, let's see. Buckeye, captains. So let's go three offense. Let's go three defense. Right. Yep, so Stroud. Yeah. Uh, JSN. Possibly. Probably. Uh, maybe an offensive lineman? I would say, yeah, I'd say Paris Johnson. Is okay. probably, it feels like a good call there. I, I feel like that's probably it. Um, yeah, I think, I think those are your three offensive captains. All right. All right. Then defensive here. Right. Zach Harrison feels like a gimme. Yeah. Harrison does seem like a gimme. Maybe Chambers. Moving back. Maybe to defense, maybe? Maybe. Uh, Proctor, depending upon how he comes back and when he comes back. Yeah. Yeah, if he's a guy Proctor. who's participating fully in camps, uh, then Proctor feels like a, a, a pretty go-to, a pretty pretty common sense guy there. Um, yeah. I I kind I kind of liked I kind of liked that one yeah, and then uh, uh, yeah I like I like Harrison Ham maybe Hamilton no maybe not Hamilton what what who no no I'm 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 thinking if there's so 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 our predictions would be Stroud J S N uh we said um, Harris Johnson Harris Johnson. Then defense, we had uh, Harrison, Chambers, and Proctor. Hmm. Oh no, I'm uh, having a hard time seeing it, right. seeing Chambers. Bla block O. Probably the bigger question: Who's going to wear the block O? I, 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 I like Zach I like Harrison, Harrison. Feels like a call. <laughs> uh, but. You know, that's a Austin. That, that might be a good call. Like Austin keeps bringing up Bob, which makes, I think makes a ton of sense just because the team likes him. He's been around such a long time. Um, what, or Cage. he's just a very, is a guy who's very talented, but has just had injury after injury. Um, I, I think, the, about, I don't know. What about, I, I don't see captain, but I think block O is certainly possible. What about cage, Jared? Captain, maybe block O, no. Okay. All right. Um, all right. We are running a little long here, Jared. Let's do a quick, let's do a quick oh, um, ad break. one or two. Um, one or two coffee ad break. Kyle's yes. lit. Kyle's limiting me on the amount of coffees I'm allowed to do in the <laughs> okay, I Kyle, first and foremost, you can't tell me what to do. Kyle's like, oh, Jared, you're only allowed to talk about one or two coffees. Well, guess what? The whole shebang sampler. <laughs> That's right. I'm talking about 12 coffees. Got, Got him. him. <laughs> Uh, the whole shebang sampler. Uh, you get 12 separate two and a half ounce bags of coffee. It is all of their non-flavored coffees in one easy to purchase sampler pack. It is called the whole shebang. Um, I was going to go into details on it, uh, but they're sold out. So I don't feel like I'd be doing a very uh, good thing as a, as an advertising partner by, by going too much deeper into it, but it, it is the fear, no evil, the fierce, the integrity, the drink from the skull of your enemy, the Odin, the Rocco, the Thor, the other Rocco. That's right. There's two Roccos, uh, ride or die, the cast iron, the rage against the dying of the light and the Loki. So Kyle, that was 12 coffees. Uh, I brought up how the, uh, 
the Rocco is available in both a light and a dark roast. So let's talk about the Rocco again. Excuse me. It's not a light roast. It's a medium roast. I kept saying light. It's light. -er. It's not light. It's a medium roast coffee. Um, it's an Ethiopian single origin coffee, um, which he says is the birthplace of coffee as we know it. Uh, there's something pretty special and unique about an Ethiopian natural when it's at its best. And that is what you were getting here. Uh, we are, <laughs> you're a dick. We are excited to introduce one such coffee. Who should drink this coffee? Those who enjoy coffees that insist on being noticed. Notes include tropical fruit, blueberry, watermelon, jasmine, displaying a rich acidity and a silthy mouth, mouth feel. This coffee is a pleasing exotic. Like all their other coffees, it is fair trade certified and USDA organic. You can find this coffee and a whole lot of other coffees, which might be your new favorite coffee, over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Kyle, what's our next question? All right. Uh, let's see here. Nomad asks, what is the difference between associate head coach and assistant head coach? Um... <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I always um, think associate associates more like an not necessarily like an entry. It's not it's it's not necessarily an entry, but the assistant is the next guy. Associates more. I don't like know a, if I agree with that. All right. Well, that's that's how I take it. Because like, you could be like an associate part. Uh, like an associate partner, right? Because like you become an associate partner before you become a partner partner. Yeah, I agree, Austin. Um, associate to me says like almost on the same level. Like you're almost on the same level. The other one is like you're the assistant, which very clearly puts you. Okay. Below. okay. I, see, I see. I see the way that you're. Okay. All right. I can. I can see that. Yes. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Nomad with another question is ESCCPN forcing not our rivals to always be the end of October game. Sorry, I was reading the chat. What the hell did you just say? Is E is ESCCPN mm -hmm. forcing not our rivals to always be at the end of October? No, the that's uh, how the schedule was laid out. I, and also, it would be Fox. If anyone's mm -hmm. if anyone's manipulating the Big Ten schedule, it's Fox. And then um, he asked, we already answered this, if the Big Ten goes away from divisions, who would Ohio State's three pod teams be? We answered that earlier. Uh, I don't know if we did. State, we definitely said it would be Michigan and Michigan State. Did Indiana we ever decide or Indiana on... Indiana or Illinois. I, I, and I say uh, Indiana. Here's the thing. I think Indiana, Illinois, Purdue, and who am I forgetting? Northwestern. I think all those teams would want to be like in the same pod, right? Well, I can't forget about Wisconsin. That's there too. You could say Wisconsin. See, Wisconsin probably wants to be with Minnesota and Iowa and Nebraska. Mm -hmm. You know, but but you can't. Man, it'd be ridiculous putting Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State, and Ohio State together. Like that would be ridiculous. But but also it puts it's just like it's a huge geographic break for anyone other than Penn State to be in a pod with Maryland and and um Rutgers. Couldn't think of Rutgers' name. Yeah. Uh the I I know hold on. I think Gangland put, or was it Austin? Oh, here it goes. It was, it was Austin. Oh, yeah, but he did. No, no, no. He did it with. He did it as if Virginia and UNC were in it. So that's that's not that's not what we're looking for. Um, yeah, if if there were, I think. But again, if you if you add two like East Coast teams, a uh, Virginia and a UNC. Then it's Rutgers plus the three yeah. ACC teams, and then Penn State, Michigan State, Michigan, Ohio State would be in a pod. I think. Okay. Yeah, you're you're right. 
Uh, let's see. <laughs> Does Ohio State fans care about the Illinois rivalry anymore? There, no. there, there's no rivalry. Just because there's a trophy doesn't mean there's a rivalry. There's no rivalry there, and there never has been. Trophy does not equal rival. Rival does not equal trophy. We can love the Illibuck all we want, but it's not a. It's it's. They're not a rival. They're they're not. They're, the Ill, listen, listen. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say. It. I'm gonna say this as if this were a. Uh, Patreon only, Sloop Cat only episode, and I'm just gonna say it. Illinois is the armpit of Big Ten football. That might be too nice. Armpit might be too nice. I can think of one worse spot, and it might be that. <laughs> I do respect the Illibuck, Austin. I don't respect Illinois. <laughs> they they are the butthole of Big Ten football there. I said it. All right. More, more important question here, Jared. <laughs> Is it acceptable <laughs> to gift a 30-pack of Natty, natty Light <laughs> for no. Valentine's Day? <laughs> the, the, there's Listen, there's only one acceptable... Kyle, do me a favor and, and, and read that question again, and I'm going to tell you where to stop. Is it acceptable to gift a 30-pack of Natty Light? Stop. No. Okay. <laughs> no, is the answer to that question. Like, the only time you show up to anything with a 30-pack of Natty Light is if that thing is happening on a campus. That is the only acceptable place to bring a 30 pack of Natty Light. If the party is on campus, if it's a if it's a college party with a bunch of college people, but it's slightly off campus, you better show up at least with Miller High Life. At um, least with Miller High Life. Running a little long here, so let's enter Never. these next ones here a little bit quicker here. Uh, Never. What is your... <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite beverage to drink for the Super Bowl? A beer. Yeah. I you you mean um I feel like we can go a little heavy on a Super Bowl. We'll go a little heavy, maybe maybe and, and typically mm, hmm, I'm going to go I think we can go with like a like a like a porter if we want to be a little bit more specific. I think we can go porter for a Super Bowl. Okay. Right, just a cold beer in the hand. That that's that's all. I yeah, can. no, no, no. One hundred percent that. I was just trying to be a little more specific. So I'm gonna go Porter, Super Bowl Porter. Okay. Uh, wings are the best football food. What is the best basketball food to watch an Ohio State game with? If wings are the best football food, which is a, I'll, I'll concede that. It's yeah. a, it's it's a debatable topic, but I will I, I will concede it. Um, what is the best basketball food? Is That's it a popcorn? Good question. It might be Nacho? popcorn. Nachos. See, I think it's popcorn because you can take popcorn and you can sh throw it up and then try and catch it in your mouth and you're it's basketball, right? I'd say nachos because you can you can mix up nachos kind of like how you can mix up different seasonings with wings. You can mix up nachos. So I'd go. I'd go nachos. Yes, I love a good, I, I love a good brat too. But I'd say I something do too. Quick but you can't easy. buy a good pro, a good brat at the shot. They're they're all no. terrible. <laughs> uh, Florida Buck right. says, "Trust me, funnel cake at the shot only." Listen, <laughs> if the floor if if the funnel cake is half as good, if it's half as good as Florida Buck, and again, if you're in our Discord, you know, insist that it is. It must be amazing. Florida Buck in our in, in our Discord talks about the funnel cake at the shot with regularity and with great great respect. All right, uh, next question here, Jared. Should a Sweet Sixteen appearance be deemed a successful season for this season? Yes. 
Yes. I mean, yeah. I kind of hate having it's, the bar be that low. Uh, it It's tough. Like, Holtman has not passed the second round at Ohio State. He has not gotten past the second round. That's 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 a bad, that's a bad stat. This is this is his fourth year. This is his fourth year, and his first year he got. Yeah, first yeah first year he got um, to the second round. Third year didn't make it, uh, and um, last year we were a two seed, and lost in the first round. So, yeah, Sweet Sixteen would be. Sweet. Sorry, I, I I need to go back to food here for a second. Austin, who I love and respect, one of our oldest fans, says, and I quote, one of the best burritos I have ever had was at the Horseshoe. I know that's a hot take. That can't be true. No way. That cannot no be way. true. A burrito at the Shoe. Uh, yeah, no, no. In your in in your in your defense, you said it was a hot take. And by the way, I acknowledge it. Maybe it was good, but the best. Didn't say the best. Hold on. He says he didn't say the best. Okay, he said one of. My bad. He did say one of. Um. Better than some Mexican restaurants. Where, where is this mystical burrito stand at the shoe? Because surely it's not one of the actual like built-in concession stands, right? It had to have been like a separate, like freestanding booth. Uh, I was on sea level, by my seat. It was a freestander. Yes, yeah, like because it was yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, because there's no way it was from the actual concession stand because everything in the actual concession stand is garbage. I'll say it. You know what? You know what's not garbage, Jared? The iron bean coffee. Oh, no, we, we already did the iron bean coffee read. The, the color rush, the color rush that was, um, it had the to stay in Michigan game. It had it had to have been some sort of like outside entity contractor thing, Austin. There's 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 no way. There's no way. Uh, whatever that company is that does Ohio State's concession stands, it's all gar it's all garbage. I I'll, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna believe you. Uh, color rush, which yeah, uh, Ohio State and. And Michigan went color on color for the basketball game. Maybe a subtle hint to the uh, to the football teams that they should do the same. I loved it. I, I loved seeing that. I, I want to see that in the football. I want to see that in the football game. I do too. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. I want to see it again. I want to see it again here in in a few weeks when Ohio State and Michigan come to Columbus. I want to see that again. Yeah. And yeah, Austin, that's why UCLA USC looks so pretty. Gangland says it makes the scarlet look that much more pretty. Um, yeah, it's they're contrasting colors. Why not? It's, it's not like it's Wisconsin and Ohio State going color on color. Mm. Why not? Yeah. Let's do it. Yep, yep. All right. Um, I think those are all the questions. Well, we'll answer tonight. We we do have we are. Fuck, fuck Isaac. I think brings up a good right point now. here. What if we did maze on gray? <laughs> it would have to. Yeah, my my eyes would hurt so much watching the TV. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on uh, that one. Uh, I'm gonna pass. Well, and also unless unless Michigan went like highlighter with it. There's not a ton of contrast mm. between between a gray and a yellow, especially if the weather's bad and the vision's obscured by some snow or whatever. That that might those those might be too close. Unless, like I said, Michigan went like highlighter yellow with it. Ugh. 
All right. I, th I think we're going to throw up a little bit, Jared. Let's, let's end uh, today's episode here. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Uh, yeah. Come, come hang out in our discord server. Uh, come be a patron in our, in our, uh, in our Patreon. You can get access to all of our digital stuff, uh, which is early access, to the episodes, um, access to our Patreon only episode, which we do typically every week. Um, access to, I already said early access to episodes, access to the secret channels, the, the premium channels in our discord servers. Um, it's only $3 a month. It's, it's, I, you pass up. Let's be honest. You probably walk past $3 in change a month. Between the, the change you drop or what just hangs out in your couch cushions or your car or whatever, like $30 or $3 just sort of evaporates in a month. Just sort of magically dissipates. Why not give it to us instead? And by the way, if you don't, if you're like, yeah, I just, I don't do monthly. I, I got this month. I got monthly fee for Netflix and a monthly fee for Hulu and a monthly fee for this. And I'm just done with these monthly $32, like $30, $32 and some change, uh, will get you a, um, a whole year. So that's it. Just a one time. I, I think, because it's you get like a twelve percent, I think it is discount for doing the whole year up front. So you set three dollars times twelve, but then like I, like I said, I give you a little bit of a discount if you want to do the whole thing up front. So yeah, Austin says, tell you what, join the Discord if you've been wanting to be a patron for a while and and, and you want to try it out. I'll pay your three dollars for the first month. Just reach out to me and you can come give it a try. And then Gangland says, yeah, same. Guys, we have two current patrons who like this community so much that they're willing to give you one month for free out of their own pockets. You think we don't do you, you think we aren't a family over here? Kyle, we need a Twitch chat where they can actually like just hand out yes. subscription for a, where <laughs> Kyle, we should be doing this on Twitch. And also I fucking and I hate, hate Jared. Jared. So <laughs> yeah. That's how much he likes Kyle. Uh, so oh. there, uh, there you have it. There you have it. Um, Bits YouTube stream. Um, yeah. Imagine guys, imagine if we did, imagine if we did the sleep cats only episodes, but like on Twitch or something, that would be wild. Um, yeah, Kyle, uh, it would be fun, but also like part of the fun of the sleep cast only episodes. <laughs> gangland that would be fun awesome the emotes would be flowing Stuart what's twitch <laughs> uh, oh that's funny um Stuart to help you out that's where the phrase uh f's in the chat comes from <laughs> um God, I'm I'm so thrown now. Yeah, just just come join our community. Uh, the Discord, by the way, is free. There is a premium section of the Discord, but you can join it for free. It's most of the channel. Yeah, F's for respect, Stuart. Most of the most of the channels are free. There are some channels that are behind a paywall. Um, but if you just want to come hang out in the Discord server, try it out, decide if you like it, um, and then join up, you can also do that. Um, Kyle, that's my, my mouth is getting dry. My head's starting to hurt. Uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, I'm going to show some love to, I thought that was a MySpace thing. I'm going to, I'm going to sh show hey, some love to, to, uh, Mike Vrabel. Named all right, all right, the all right. NFL coach of the year. Well deserved for, for coach Vrabel. Is that it for Kyle's Corner? 
Yeah, it's been a it was a pretty boring week, honestly. <laughs> News worthy outside of um the basketball yeah, no, here. Note that we didn't do a public episode in the second half of the week. We did Sloop Cats only yeah. last week, but that was like, okay, uh, Kyle, can we justify doing a regular? Ep- did anything happen this week where we can do a, a third episode? And we were like, you want to bitch about the new field for 30 minutes? No? <laughs> no? Okay, screw yeah. it. We'll just do a Sloop Cats only. All right, yeah. Uh, yeah, slow week. Um, but yeah, that's we were doing an Ask Sloop Cats now, and, or Ask Sloop Cast now. Yeah, exactly, Austin. It's the same damn field. All right. Uh, Kyle, I've, I've often lost my train of thought again. Are, are we done here? Should I do the thing where I introduce the band? Yep. That's it. All right. Uh, out of the Columbus area, uh, I'm going to be playing tonight the Castros. Uh, they, are, they are called the Castros. They're from Columbus, Ohio. And uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. I see you, gangland. Uh, So once again, this is the Castros 